Hey y'all, it's uh, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis here at the end of March and I have a couple of blooming plants behind me that I'm going to quickly show you and uh, then I will, uh, I'll probably call it a day, it's going to be kind of a quick one today. So what I'll do is I'll show you uh, Cattleya Maxima con color. Uh, I would show you this one, but that one's already started to fade. That's a Cattleya Maxima Tipo. Um, but what I can do is actually, through the magic of television, I can put them next to each other so you guys can see a quick comparison. Uh, also, I have a Cattleya Tigrina blooming right now. I don't ever remember it blooming this early in the year. Uh, my memory tells me that it usually goes in like the dead of summer. So uh, this is kind of a nice surprise, but uh, let's get the camera turned around and Actually, before I do, I should say that I'm going to start moving my my plants out of Gene's greenhouse since the world here in Central Texas is warm enough uh, for for orchids to grow outside for you know the next for, through the growing season really until uh, till probably about mid November is when I start looking for cold weather, thinking about cold weather. Uh, so this collection in here in this amazing greenhouse will slowly slowly decrease over time, not slowly, over the next couple weeks, uh, so that Jean can have her greenhouse back and I'll start growing outside in the backyard again uh, while I start thinking about building the next greenhouse in my place. Uh, anyway, let's turn the camera around and check out some blooms. So, <laughs> this is what dying Cattleya Maxima flowers look like. The lip still looks good, but you know, these, these flowers are spent. But here is what they look like in their prime. And of course you can, you can tell that really one of the main features of Cattleya Maxima is the lip. So some years ago when I had the opportunity to buy a con color like this, it was an unbloomed seedling and I got it from Clown Alley Orchids. Uh, unfortunately, John Stubbing, who uh, used to own Clown Alley, has has passed away. Uh, but you know, this this is still a plant that is is growing very strongly for me, as you can see by this wonderful head of flowers. But of course, what's interesting is is that lip has sort of disappeared. You know, well, I, let me rephrase that: the lip is still there, but the 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 striations and the color patterns are mostly gone. Although if you take a look, you can still see the patterns in the side of the lip, even though there aren't any colors there. So that's kind of a kind of interesting thing. It's almost like the lip itself is somewhat folded at those locations. But uh, another thing that I want to point out is that, you know, most of you out there who know what a con color is are probably saying, wait a second. Con color means one color. I see two. And by two, that means the the pink here and then the white lip. So typically a con color would just be this single shade of pink throughout the entire flower. You know, the, the, the colors here in the middle of the lip don't count. Um, so it's really the petals and sepals and, and the primary color of the lip would be considered a con color if it was one single color. You'll often see Cattleya Schroedery exhibiting con color like coloration. Uh, I don't know why, for some reason Maxima is an exception where if you have these these light pink petals and sepals and then you still have this white lip, or I should say colorless lip, again remember the, the yellow here in the in the middle, in the lip, in the throat I should say, doesn't count. This somehow still constitutes a con color. I don't entirely know why, but it is what it is. And so I get to say that this is a con color. Regardless, it's a, it's a pretty unusual color variety. I think it's really attractive despite not having the, the sort of featured color of those, of those uh, stripes there in the throat. Uh, but it's a, it's a really nice, healthy plant. You can see it is blooming while also putting out uh, another a mature growth here. And then really cranking on some roots. So that, that's a nice, healthy root system. That's, that's a good goal. If you're growing cattleyas and you have a goal in mind for roots, you know, there are worse, <laughs> there are worse options than that. So um, it's a happy plant. 
Uh, as always, large grade Orchiata bark in a clay pot. And we'll go past some roots. More roots looking good on this skinny purpurata that I highlighted, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago as a success with this growth, but then the roots for these um, had rotted out. Uh, it's still doing okay. It's still doing well, but it's putting out new roots and those bulbs should get fat again. Same with this little purpurata here. Not sure why these are so skinny, but regardless, I'll take these guys home and get those outside since they are the most cold tolerant of the Cattleyas that I own. Uh, you know, walk around is pretty cold, but all mine are in Houston. Here's that Tigrina. I don't know if the camera is picking up the color very well since it's kind of an overcast late afternoon. It's like 6.30 in the evening. But uh, let me see if this helps. So Tigrina, of course, used to be called uh, Leopoldii, but it's now Tigrina, or it's back to Tigrina, really. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down. Hold on one sec. All right, sorry about that. It was way up there, and I was having to shoot from below it, and that was very uncomfortable. So let's try this again. Here's Tigrina. And you can see this flower is not quite all the way open yet. This one over here is, is looking pretty good. But you can see there's just, I mean, these are super thick, waxy flowers. I mean, this, is, this feels like plastic. The lip here feels like hard plastic. And this is one of the most powerfully scented Cattleyas you can buy. If you are a scent fiend like me, Cattleya Tigrina is for you. Um, as you can see, it's a, they're, they're pretty large plants. You can see here, compared to my hand, they're tall. Uh, similar in size to the Amethysta glossa, which you can see back there. Real similar. In fact, if, if I had these two next to each other and they weren't blooming, I'd have a tough time telling them apart. So, uh, you know, you typically buy Tigrina as a seedling about this size, and then they just keep getting taller and taller until you have a bloom. And I have to say this particular Tigrina is nothing special. Uh, I would never consider getting this one awarded or or anything. It's it's pretty average. Um, you know, lots of reflexed sepals and petals and lots of waviness, which is it's normal for this species, but you know, modern breeding has taken a lot a lot of those quote unquote flaws out. Um, so I'm not hopeful for an award. I really just grow this for when this is uh, blooming in the sunshine. It is just such a cool flower. Hopefully you can see some of the spots there. They really show up when um, when the sun is out. And then when the sun is out, the, the fragrance is just insane. You know, it's, it's probably a tie between Wakariana and Tigrina in terms of the most powerful Cattleya scent that I can think of, and, and it really is one of my favorites. Uh, again, as always, you know, nice big fat root system growing in clay bark, excuse me, clay pot and bark. I uh, see a new lead breaking here, so at some point I'll have to repot this. Hopefully this can stay on the pot. Uh, you can see that I've killed a root tip down here. Anyway, I hope you're having a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.